NC State University's plug-and-play residential photovoltaic system uses a PV utility interface, or as we call it, a PUI, to serve as the gateway between the PV system and the electric grid. Because of the smarts in this PUI and its ability to open the breaker connecting the, the PV system to the grid, it's able to serve as an inspector uh, via its auto inspection, which we're going to explain in this video. And it does this auto inspection not just on day one when the system's turned on, but every day of the life of the system. Uh, not just the first year, but for 20 years, 30 years, the system is getting reinspected every day, uh, making it, in fact, much safer than a traditionally installed system because potential problems are found before they become serious problems. In this video, we're going to walk through a flowchart of this PUI's function and then also walk through the prototype software to show some of these functions. This is the flowchart of the PUI's function, and I can highlight here the steps that involve some human interaction with the PUI, which are rather minimal. We'll talk about each of these. The majority of the system is automated. When you, when you plug it in and close the breaker, uh, essentially, it, it, it runs itself with very little input. And let's walk through and show what this is. The first block here is the utility installation of the PUI. The homeowner must contact the utility to request the PUI. As a part of that, there's an interconnection process at the, at, the, at the utility that approves this location for a certain capacity of, uh, of PV the utility programs the PUI to allow only up to that capacity of PV and wires it for either a sell-all or net metering connection. They send their, their employee or their contractor out to install it, and the PUI requires that that contractor connect to it with a smartphone app specifically for utility installers that requires the utility installer to verify that the ground connection has properly been made both with photo and signature, verifying that the, the ground resistance has actually been measured uh, from the, the PV receptacle to ground. Once that's installed, the PUI will contact a national database, uh, either through the Bluetooth connected smartphone of the, the installer or homeowner, or through an optional Wi-Fi connection of the PUI. It connects this database to determine if a local HJ has allowed auto permitting of plug and play systems. If they have not, the PUI won't allow the circuit breaker to be closed, and the system has to stop here. Uh, the system has to go through a traditional uh, paper based or whatever the traditional permitting application is, uh, has to wait for the electrical inspector to come. When the electrical inspector comes to the site, they have to enter a special code into the PUI that then allows the breaker to be closed and the system to turn on. If the AHJ does allow auto permitting, at this point you're able to close the breaker. You do so once the system has been plugged in. Uh, if the system is plugged in, the breaker is closed, the startup procedure starts. If you try to close the breaker before this, it will only soak. It will only stay closed momentarily before it opens itself back up automatically. The system goes through the startup procedure. It authenticates the inverter and the PUI module. We'll talk about that more going through the prototype software. It does a open circuit voltage check of each module. It does a DC connector safety check. This is a resistance check uh, of the DC connector between the module and the inverter. This is a source of, of faults in the field. So this checks this not just once, but every day for the life of the system. And if that connection starts to come loose and become high resistance, the PUI will find it and disallow um, that module to, to generate power and inform the owner of the error. The inverters perform a DC insulation resistance check and the PUI itself performs an insulation resistance check on the AC cable back to the inverter. Uh, this is done every day 
These checks are not built into the prototype system, but we feel they are important safety checks to have on a commercialized version. At this point, if it's the first time through this safety check, in other words, the system has just been turned on for the first time, uh, and PUI auto permitting is allowed, the PUI will generate a standardized electrical permit application and electronically send that off to the EHJ. It'll include the make and model of all inverters and modules, even the serial number of those inverters and modules. That will be accepted perhaps automatically by some HJs, perhaps with a very quick review by other HJs, and generally a permit fee will be required. The owner will be prompted via that smartphone app to pay the permit fee. Once that permit fee is accepted, and the permit is accepted, the system is allowed to, to power on. The system powers on. Uh, as soon as the inverters start producing power, the inverter is immediately checking to see if the power that each inverter says it's producing is the same as what the PUI is measuring. If they don't agree, the PUI opens that disconnect because that means there's unauthorized load or generation somewhere in the system uh, which the PUI does not allow. It opens the system, the problem has to be sorted out before it can run through startup again. <clears throat> that breaker has to be manually closed. Anytime the PUI opens the breaker, the PUI can't close the breaker. You have to manually close the breaker. At the end of the day, the system goes to sleep. Before it's able to produce power again, it has to go through that startup procedure one more time. We're now going to walk through the prototype software for this PUI. This is a, a PC version. We're going to walk through these tabs. Installation tab, Authentication tab, Safety and Reliability tab, and Generation tab. Just to orient you to the, the tabs and see that you can flip between these at any time. Along the right side is some status information that's always visible. So here we've added some buttons just for the demonstration essentially pause buttons so we can talk about it and, and control the flow of the process. Normally this button wouldn't be there. This would occur automatically. So the software has found the PUI. This could be the smartphone finding it or the PC finding it through the, the local connection. Uh, this shows that utilities approved this system for three kilowatts to interconnect uh, at this location. This shows that it's been determined that the AHJ has approved plug and play permitting and inspection in this jurisdiction. And now it's going to prompt us or tell us that we need to install the racking system. That racking system needs to be UL 2703 compliant. And in the prototype here, it's got a button that says, yes, the racking is compliant and completed. And then it says install modules and cables. Yes, that's been done correctly. Click this button. This could be adjusted to be more stringent and require signatures for each of these or less stringent just notification but no button or confirmation required. Now the system is improved for approved for startup. You can see on the right the breaker is still open but now this is the time when we would physically throw the breaker and you'll see what happens when you do throw the breaker. Uh, the PUI starts sending out communications uh, either along power line communications which is the expectation and, and the base version of the prototype. The prototype is also able to use wireless communications between the PUI and the inverters. So here it's looking for inverters. Uh, oh, it found a one kilowatt inverter. Still looking, still looking. All right, no other inverters were found. It found one, one kilowatt inverter. And now it's going to talk to that inverter and request some ID information from it. And this is going to allow it to authenticate it as properly UL listed. So now it not only knows it's properly UL listed, it's got the make, model, serial number, and um, UL compliance testing information. And now it's talking to that inverter to find out the PV modules connected to that inverter. Here it's found two PV modules. It has make, model, serial number, testing information for each of those. And there are four inverters, sorry, four modules connected to this inverter. 
Uh, it has found and authenticated each of those, double checking that there's nothing else out there, and uh, no other components are identified. So again, we get another another pause button showing up so we can walk through and show the status values here. Um, MPBBs are what our system calls the inverter. You see that on the right side there. So we click the next button, again, just the, the demo pause button. Normally it would go to this, um, perform these functions automatically. Uh, and here it's going to do the open circuit voltage check of each module. And this is a check um, partially looking for failed bypass diodes, which is one failure mode of modules. Uh, if a bypass diode fails, it can change the open circuit voltage significantly uh, enough so that the system can easily find uh, a failed bypass diode. It also could find uh, a physically damaged module. If there was a module that was uh, vandalized and, and seriously broken and cracked, um, this would also likely be able to find that sort of damage. This is not just a one-time check. This is a check that's done every day for the life of the system. Again, normally you wouldn't have this, have to have that dialog box to say OK. That's just for this demo software. Now the system is approved to generate, so the PUI sends a signal out to all the inverters saying OK. Now you can generate. So they say, OK, I'm ready to generate, and they have to wait the required five minute period uh, where they verify stable uh, within certain bounds grid voltage and grid current. So that's what you see here, this waiting period that we've sped up for the process of this uh, demonstration video is waiting that five minute period uh, before they're, they're actually able to start generating. The system is now waited that five minutes and is generating. You can see that we've got only one inverter generating. As you saw earlier, we only found one inverter. Here it's listed as MPBB which is what our system calls this inverters, multi-port building blocks. We've only got one inverter connected. You can see a placeholder for inverter two. This is a dynamic screen. There could be many inverters. If you were using a microinverter system or an AC module system, you would have many inverters here. It would show the combined power there. And that's the combined power as communicated to the PUI from each inverter. That's compared to the power received at the PUI and measured by the meter in the PUI. We can also see the ground, the ground fault limits and the currently measured fault current. We also see the amount we've produced today. The breaker status is currently closed. And let me go back a moment and talk about the comparison between that, that combined power uh, above the house and the power received at PUI below the house. This is an important feature of the PUI and that is constantly comparing these two values and if at some point they, they don't match within a, a predefined tolerance level, the PUI will open the breaker and that's because there's some unapproved generation or unapproved load on the system. That could be a non-plug-and-play inverter that's been connected and it's generating. Uh, it could be somebody trying to, to add a receptacle out on the end of the circuit and put a load out there. Uh, in either case, uh, the PUI will recognize these two don't match. It means there's something unapproved happening on the system. It immediately opens the breaker. Another way it can open the breaker is if there's a, a ground fault. You see that here it's constantly measuring uh, the fault current, which is known to occur. There's always a small amount of fault current. And then we can set a uh, ground fault limit, shown here on the screen, to be a very sensitive 5 milliamps. Uh, when we're not going to generate, we're not going to create uh, an on-purpose ground fault here today. But what we will do uh, for purposes of demonstration is to change this ground fault limit level from 5 milliamps to 0 milliamps. And when we do that, That'll mean the measured fault is now above the ground fault limit. This unrealistic zero limit, immediately the op breaker opens and we get sent an error message shown here on the screen. But this message could be sent by email and text message, perhaps even audible alarm at the PUI. 
uh, depending on the, the preferences of the user. Uh, if the PUI trips a breaker for any reason, the PUI can't reset the breaker. The breaker has to be manually reset. So it's therefore important that an alarm is sent that somebody sees or hears fairly soon so that the problem can be addressed and the system can be back online very quickly. You can see that the, the tabs here still have the information saved. Tab 1 will keep this information starting again at tab 2 when the system starts up each day. It's tabs 2, 3, and 4 uh, will rerun each day for the life of the system. And this rounds out the, the functions of the PUI, showing those benefits of auto permitting and auto inspection that incur auto inspection portion every day for the life of the system, uh, hopefully providing a safer system than a traditionally installed system that's just inspected on the, uh, on the day it's turned on.